my ENFP sister made these. So I was like, maybe the any users will be interested in this because I went to the Taylor Swift concert. So she made these nails. So we have debut, fearless, speak now, red, 1989. Then we have rep, lover, Folklore, which is really cool. I don't know if you can really see all the detail in that. Evermore and Midnight's. Yeah, super exciting. Except for except for now, I'm in a jail. This is this is my prison until these fall off. I never wear long nails ever, 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 ever. I'm in a prison. I can't do anything with these. I don't know how video editing is going to be with these. It's going to be bad is the answer. So today I'm doing extroverted intuition. This is the dominant cognitive function for ENFPs and ENTPs in the Myers-Briggs system. And it's the secondary cognitive function for INFPs and INTPs in the Myers-Briggs system. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to first take quotes from Carl Jung and I'll take quotes from his 1921 book, Psychological Types. Then I'll take uh, quotes from Vander Hoop's 1937 book, Conscious Orientation. And then I'll take quotes from Myers and Briggs 1980 book, Gifts Differing. And then they started as early as 1942. So that's why I Put that date range there. I think I'm gonna be talking with my hands this whole time. It's gonna be interesting. So then based on all their quotes, I'm gonna define the keywords and themes. And then I wanna get into kind of the caricatured vibes. Like in 2023 in America, if I play up the stereotypes, what does it look like? So let's get into Carl Jung. Now this first quote is just about intuition in general. So this applies to NI and NE. This was just in the general intuition section, but I wanted to include it. Just as extroverted sensation strives to reach the highest pitch of actuality, because only thus can the appearance of a complete life be created, so intuition tries to encompass the greatest possibilities, since only through the awareness of possibilities is intuition fully satisfied. So it's like, a, is not a complete life, we are not completely satisfied, unless we've tried to encompass the greatest possibilities. And there was another quote about intuition in general that I think I got rid of, but it just, it talked about how it was kind of another parallel with extroverted sensation. And it talked about how a lot of times extroverted intuition can kind of look like sensing because a poss possibilities are not limited only to the ideal realm, but it was like, it can look like sensation or it can make use of sensation because it's a type of possibility. Like in the umbrella of possibilities, sensation is one category. Another quote on intuition in general, where intuition has the priority, every ordinary situation in life seems like a closed room, which intuition has to open. It is constantly seeking outlets and fresh possibilities in external life. In a very short time, every actual situation becomes a prison to the intuitive. It burdens him like a chain, prompting a compelling need for solution. This will become a theme in general with this prison, life and ordinary life and routine being this prison and it's this problem. It's this urgent problem in this prison which extroverted intuition or intuition in general needs to find a way out of. It sees routine as a problem and it kind of likes the novelty and seeking possibilities but like the previous quote said, it's not a complete life or a full life if these possibilities aren't being realized. Okay, so now the rest of these quotes will just be extroverted intuition. The intuitive is never to be found among the generally recognized reality values, but he is always present where possibilities exist. He has a keen nose for things in the bud, pregnant with future promise. He can never exist in stable, long-established conditions of generally acknowledged, though limited, value, because his eye is constantly ranging for new possibilities. Stable conditions have an air of impending suffocation. So many things to unpack here, but the word possibility shows up over and over and over again. Just like pay attention to how many times you see the word possibilities because it will come up a lot. There's a lot of metaphor too in the way he describes it. We, like we have this prison, this chain, impending suffocation, this air of suffocation. So there's a lot of metaphor. And one of the metaphors that I really like is in the bud, pregnant with future promise. And so it's talking about like these possibilities are seen very optimistically. They're seen... Uh, it's promising. The future is promising. It's, there's definitely an optimistic look at these possibilities. Um, and things that are stable and that exist and that are not possibilities, they seem suffocating. He seizes hold of new objects in new ways with eager intensity, sometimes with extraordinary enthusiasm, only to abandon them cold-bloodedly, without regard and apparently without remembrance, as soon as their range becomes clearly defined and a promise of any considerable future development no longer clings to them. As long as a possibility exists, the intuitive is bound to it with thongs of fate. It is as though his whole life went out into the new situation. So it talks about, like this begins a theme of enthusiasm and intensity and like sending your whole being out into this possibility. But as soon as it becomes clearly defined and you can kind of 
clearly see, okay, this is this is the end of the road here. This is this is as far as its possibilities go and things are becoming realized. The potential energy is kind of gone and now we're dealing with like the actual real energy and what the thing actually is. It then becomes that prison. So the thing that it was a possibility and it seems so exciting, as soon as it becomes realized, then it can just seem like, oh, okay, well, this is just part of everyday life. Now this is stable. I'm just gonna abandon it cold-bloodedly without remembrance. One gets the impression, which he himself shares, that he has just reached the definitive turning point in his life and that from now on, nothing else can seriously engage his thought and feeling. However reasonable and opportune it may be, and although every conceivable argument speaks in favor of stability, a day will come when nothing will deter him from regarding as a prison the self-same situation that seemed to promise him freedom and deliverance and from acting accordingly. So yeah, this is talking about there was that possibility, that thing that was promising freedom and deliverance, once it's actualized, it's now the prison. So it's kind of this, you know, it's this never-ending thing. You have this possibility, then it becomes actualized, then it becomes boring. So you go find this new possibility, it becomes actualized, it becomes boring. Since his intuition is largely concerned with outer objects, scenting out external possibilities, he readily applies himself to callings wherein he may expand his abilities in many directions. So this is another thing where they say, there was another quote that I talked about at the beginning that I didn't include because this was getting too long, but there was a quote about how they will make use of sensory things, and this is another quote where they're saying, they will make use of objects at times. So but not only objects, as opposed to like extroverted sensing, but sending out external possibilities and liking to expand in many directions. It's not just like, what's this one possibility, but it's many directions. The initiator of every kind of promising enterprise, natural advocate of every minority that holds the seed of future promise, capacity to inspire his fellow men with courage or to kindle enthusiasm for something new is unrivaled. His subject fused and blended with a divine possibility. He animates it. He presents it in plastic shape and with convincing fire. He almost embodies it. So it talks about they see so much this seed of future promise. They see how promising this new enterprise can be. They see things very optimistically. And because they are so enthusiastic about it and so animated about it, they can be very convincing with other people, this convincing fire. And they're inspiring other people with courage because they have such enthusiasm for it. And it's such real, genuine enthusiasm that they make other people come along. So at the end of every section, then they start mentioning, okay, what could the negative sides be? So they usually start with like the skill sets and the positive sides, and then they get to what's the negative. So this is kind of the negative quote from Carl Jung. This attitude has immense dangers. All too easily, the intuitive may squander his life. Were he able to rest with the actual thing, he would gather the fruit of his labors. Yet all too soon must he be running after some fresh possibility, quitting his newly planted field while others reap the harvest. In the end, he goes empty away. In the metaphor of like a harvest, you know, they're interested in the planting the seeds and getting the field, but not necessarily metaphorically as interested in sticking around and waiting for the seasons to change and watering it and then and then actually getting the harvest of the seeds. Okay, so I'll move on to Vanderhoop. And he, Vanderhoop uses the word instinctive as opposed to sensory. So in a second, we'll see that word. Intuitive knowledge appears as something new, while instinctive experience is always associated with the effects of earlier experience. Similar modes of behavior in children, described by Bueller as the aha experience, give one the impression of the development of sudden insight. So this is just a kind of contrast real quick from sensing, because Vanderhoop uses the word instinctive to when he's talking about sensing, kind of use those interchangeably. And so intuition is kind of this sudden aha experience. They talked about it as like a flash of lightning or a flash of insight. I'm not sure if I have that quote in here, but it's this sudden flash. Whereas when you think of in the previous quote, intuitive knowledge is like it's a something new, it's this aha moment. Whereas sensory experience is always associated with the effects of earlier experience. The vision of the extroverted intuitive individual is directed chiefly onto relationships and circumstances in the external world, which are suddenly seen in a certain context without his being able to work out how he came to it. So this is again saying you can't, if you're predicting, if you're kind of saying the future is gonna be like this because of X, Y, Z and working your way back, or I thought this, then 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 I thought this that's more reasoning power that might be more sensory saying this is the past and here's the effect on the past and so I can reason da, da, da. so it's not reasoning at it and it says you not being able to work out how you came to it intuition sees in the external world all manner of connections in an original and personal way and is charged as it were with a mission to realize certain possibilities so it's like all of a sudden a flash of insight you're seeing this connection okay we combine this with this what if we did that oh that would be so interesting what about this possibility and then it's charged it's like this mission to realize these certain possibilities and to expand in many directions and do many different possibilities plural 
The extroverted intuitive is in many respects the opposite of the introverted instinctive person, so the opposite of introverted sensing, they're saying. Whereas in the latter, so with introverted sensing, great passivity and a certain dependence on the environment is found, the extroverted intuitive manifests much spontaneous activity and independence, even to their point of rebelling against any obligation. So we have, we have their contrasting introverted sensing and extroverted intuition being opposite. So introverted sensing, passive, certain dependence on the environment, um, not rebelling against obligations because if they're opposites, so if the extroverted intuition rebels against obligations, introverted sensing follows in line with these obligations, feel, maybe feels very responsible and obligated. Um, the extroverted intuitives, they talked about rebellion, spontaneous activity, and independent. Now we get into the children of this type, Always, it's so fascinating every time. Children of this type are merry and full of the joy of life, but often extremely tiresome. They are always thinking out something fresh, and their imagination continually suggests fresh possibilities. They like to impress others by startling remarks or behavior, and at an early age want to be something special. Later also, one finds among these intuitives particularly lively people, active in mind, and expressing themselves with freedom. I love this quote, active in mind. I do find that they're very active in mind, perhaps mind running, you know, 100 miles an hour, let's say, but just very active in mind, constantly seeking out fresh possibilities. When they are at the top of their form, there is something radiant and inspiring about them. They prefer to radiate enthusiasm and to stimulate others rather than to work something out or to enter on any lasting relationship with anyone. Novelty attracts them, both in people and in things, which makes them extremely changeable. So once again, definitely contrasted from introverted sensing, where it talks about, you know, introverted sensing unchanging, extroverted intuition extremely changeable, seeking novelty. Um, and they talked about introverted, introverted sensing not really liking anything new. And we have here a lot of enthusiasm stimulating others, whereas with introverted sensing we had a lot of reserve and calm. Owing to this excessive spontaneity in their nature, extroverted intuitives find it extremely difficult to bind themselves to keep rules or appointments. They cannot always be depended on. Their activity is often very great, but somewhat incalculable. They like, however, to see quick results, and failing this, their attention is readily distracted to something else. They do not like to admit that they cannot do a thing, and they will discover fresh possibilities where others have failed to get on. This is something, there was definitely a theme within there, and I don't know if I included many quotes about this, but there was definitely a quote about liking novel problems and problem solving. So where other people see a problem as difficult, Extrovert intuition will see it as exciting, and it talked about them being clever and really liking problem solving. And there, it did, there was many quotes about them being clever. They could be discoverers, inventors, lawyers, politicians, or artists who manage to find new modes of expression. I think this is very characteristic of the type of things you might see them doing. Like, okay, my sister's an artist, so we see, you know, you know, this type of thing. She's an ENFP. Garrett's dad's an ENTP, he's a lawyer slash like professional poker player. He's got second place in a World Series of Poker tournament. So anyway, it's very, it's very interesting. Um, the different things, very inventive. It's very off the beaten path. If he notices a mistake, he's usually very adroit in correcting it or covering it up. For these people are really startlingly clever. They give an impression of making nothing of the difficulties with which others have had to struggle. They can get away with anything. This is, if this starts a theme, of um, evasion, perhaps, or uh, if they make a mistake, they can cover it up, they can uh, get away with anything. Okay, this quote here in particular is about if they have extroverted intuition supported by feeling. So in this case, this would be ENFPs or like INFPs. Feeling may play a large or a small part in the lives of intuitives. The majority of artists belong to this type. They shrink from intimate relationships, owing to a fear of limiting thereby their freedom to act in accordance with their intuitions. As a rule, they are on friendly terms with a large number of people, but have no really intimate friends. It is a characteristic which enables them to evade, with considerable skill, conflicts both within themselves and with others. A joke or a compliment will be made to distract attention from any difficulty or contradiction. The consequences of feeling will always be avoided, if in any way possible. The facts of the external world, and physical and instinctual needs, are likely to be the greatest hindrance to anyone whose constant aim is to realize fresh possibilities. When consumed with zeal for their work, they will, for example, easily forget to eat or sleep until exhaustion overcomes them. Okay, so now we'll get into Myers and Briggs. Regards the immediate situation as a prison from which escape is urgently necessary and aims to escape by means of some sweeping change in the objective situation. This is, again, so, so fascinating, these metaphors, but we're continuing this metaphor of this prison. And what is going to bring freedom? Change. 
is wholly directed upon outer objects, searching for emerging possibilities, and will sacrifice all else for such possibilities when found. They, there were many quotes where extrovert intuition can appear sensory at times. It's wholly directed upon outer objects. So it's so it's not just seeing, like, I think extroverted sensing would be like, oh, look at this glass, look at this material. Oh, maybe this is cheap top right here or whatever. Oh, this is a nice seal. You know, maybe extroverted sensing is thinking things like that. Um, but I think extroverted intuition, it might be focused on an outer object, but it's searching for the possibilities beyond with what's here. So the fact that it's a candle is not necessarily inter interesting, but what, you know, what could we do with this? You know, what could we do with this? It's empty now. I've uh, boiled things out of it. But what could, what could we, uh, what could we do with this container? I was just trying to find any old random object in my environment. Finds its greatest value in the promotion and initiation of new enterprises. Requires the development of balancing judgment, not only for the criticism and evaluation of the intuitive enthusiasms, but also to hold it to the completion of its various activities. Are alert to all possibilities. Are strong in initiative and creative impulse, but not so strong in completing projects. So this is another thing where it kind of, you see this word impulse, where extroverted sensing and extroverted intuition both had this word impulse that I saw. But this is more creative impulse as opposed to sensory impulse. Have lives that are likely to be a succession of projects, are stimulated by difficulties, and most ingenious in solving them. So again, we have this liking problem solving and very ingenious, clever solving them. Hate routine, are tireless at what interests them, but find it hard to get other things done. Their interest, enthusiasm, and energy pour suddenly into unforeseeable channels like a flash flood, sweeping everything along, overwhelming all obstacles, carving out a path which others will follow long after the force that made it has flowed on into other things. I think it's such a great metaphor. I've really loved the metaphors in these sections, the prison and the chains or, chains or whatever. There's been so many good metaphors that I've really liked, but they talk about extra intuition. It's like a flash flood pouring all of its energy, overwhelming all obstacles, liking the difficulties, we're cutting out the obstacles, do, 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 creating this path. And it might be years later, long after, that everyone else is like, oh, yeah, maybe this is a good path. And then people start following on. But by the time these other people are like, oh, yeah, maybe this is a good thing, extroverted intuition's already on to something else. Okay, I've got two long quotes here. Sorry, this looks kind of bad, but they were, I thought it was a good quote. It is a perceptive energy, an intuitive vision of some possibility in the external world, which they feel to be peculiarly their own because they saw it first in a very original and personal way. Aside from any practical consideration, they feel charged with a mission to realize that possibility. It becomes their master and in its service, they may forget to eat or sleep. They cannot rest until they get the genie out of the bottle. However, once they get the genie out or even reach the point where everyone recognizes that it can be got out, it does not interest them anymore. The genie is no longer a possibility. It is a mere fact. Somebody else can take over from there. This is another really good metaphor. I'm really loving the metaphors in this section, but I think the genie out of the bottle thing is very interesting. So they're like, I cannot eat or sleep or rest until I get this genie out of the bottle. Other people maybe don't even believe them, but they are focused on getting this genie out of the bottle. Then once they get the genie out of the bottle, whatever this possibility could be, um, or by the time other people are like, oh yeah, maybe it's not such a scary possibility. Yeah, maybe we could do this. They're already like, okay, well, it's already out. We're already, <laughs> we're already on to other things. It's not interesting anymore. I've already seen what I can see there. I'm wondering if this is going to be cut off in the screen recording. There are, however, two internal dangers that are more serious. First, intuitives must not squander their energies. In a world full of possible projects, they must pick those that have potential value, either intrinsically or for the intuitive's own development. Then, having started, they must not quit. They must persevere until they have established something, that the idea works or does not work, that they should or should not go on. It is not quitting if an intuitive woman writes one good mystery and stops because mystery writing is not what she wants to do the rest of her life. But it is quitting if she stops in the middle or finishes badly what she could finish well. So yeah, back to the two, you know, Myers and Briggs, they have a lot of development advice, particularly in their sections. And they're like, hey, one, pick good things <laughs> that you're going to actually, that's either going to help your development or you're just going to value intrinsically. And then two, you know, finish it to completion and finish, finish it well. Um, and then after you've finished it well and you decide you want to move on, you know, that's totally fine, but don't stop in the middle. Okay. Now we move on to the themes. Okay. Possibilities was by far, by far, 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 far the number one used word. I saw possibilities everywhere. And, it, and you know, it's you, in the plural form, Normally, there were a few times where it was in the singular form, but normally it's possibilities, searching possibilities, plural. Um, for extroverted thinking, the word was system, I saw over and over again. Uh, for introverted thinking, it was principles. 
For introverted feeling, it was misunderstood or moral law. For extroverted feeling, it was harmony. For introverted sensing, it was probably archaic. Um, there, wa there weren't that many years words used repeti repetitively. Maybe, maybe reserved or calm or archaic. Some something in there would be probably the most commonly used words. For extroverted sensing, I think sensation. I mean, I don't know if that really counts. We're talking about extroverted sensation, but just in general, the word sensation was everywhere. Um, or potentially react, reactive potentially. Um, and now we're in extroverted intuition and the word is possibilities. Encompass the greatest possibilities, only fully satisfied in awareness of possibilities, seeking fresh outlets, seeking possibilities. His eye is constantly ranging for new possibilities, as long as a possibility exists, scenting out external possibilities, expand his abilities in many directions, new possibility, kindle enthusiasm for something new, the divine possibility, running after some fresh possibility, realize certain possibilities, imagination suggests fresh possibilities, constant aim is to realize fresh possibilities, searching for emerging possibilities, alert to all possibilities. So, so many times, it's not even all of the times, but many times, the word for any is possibilities. That is the word, it's everywhere. Expectant, this is the word there, um, or promise, promising. There was an optimistic sense uh, with unknown things and future things. So expectant possibilities, bud pregnant with future promise. He sees his hold of new objects in new ways with eager intensity. Promise him freedom and deliverance. Promising enterprise holds the seed of future promise. So maybe like promising could be the word to use instead of expectant, but definitely seeing these unknown things uh, in an optimistic expectant way. The future is promising. A novelty, newness. Always thinking out something fresh. Imagination suggests fresh possibilities. Novelty attracts them both in people and in things, which makes them extremely changeable. New modes of expression, promotion and initiation of new enterprises, strong in initiative and creative impulse. Enthusiasm, there was a lot about kind of this optimistic emotion, this enthusiasm, this passion. With extraordinary enthusiasm, natural advocate, capacity to inspire, kindle enthusiasm for something new, he animates it with convincing fire, merry and full of the joy of life, something radiant and inspiring about them, radiate enthusiasm, stimulate others, interest, enthusiasm, and energy pour suddenly like a flash flood. So yeah, this very, this contagious radiating of enthusiasm. Um, Non-traditional, this is very opposite from introverted sensing, very, very different here. The intuitive is never to be found among the generally recognized reality values. He can never exist in stable, long-established conditions of generally acknowledged, though limited, value. Original and personal way, rebelling against any obligation, rely much less on common sense. Common sense is a word that I tend to associate with introverted sensing. I hear introverted sensors using that word a lot, so I put that, you know, it's kind of the traditional common sense. A prison, though, many, many metaphors about this you know, this world prison that we're in, this sensory prison, or the it's more like this routine prison. Many quotes about the routine prison, the stable prison, it's just, you know, boring. Every ordinary situation in life seems like a closed room. Every actual situation becomes a prison to the intuitive. It burdens him like a chain. Stable conditions have an air of impending suffocation. Nothing will deter him from regarding as a prison. Seemed to promise him freedom and deliverance, like deliverance from this prison expressing themselves with freedom, fear of limiting their freedom. Physical and instinctual needs are likely to be the greatest hindrance. Regards the immediate situation as a prison from which escape is urgently necessary and aims to escape by means of some sweeping change in the objective situation. So there's this huge theme about the routine and the ordinary is this prison, this closed room, it's suffocating. And we need freedom, we need deliverance, we need escape. There's a lot of words like escaping from prison um, and deliverance and freedom. Clever, are stimulated by difficulties and most ingenious in solving them, prompting a compelling need for a solution, attacking problems, active in mind, discover possibilities where others have failed to get on, startingly clever, Make nothing of the difficulties that others have struggled with. I kind of truncated that quote, but definitely liking problems, liking prob problem solving, stimulated, stimulated by difficulties, very clever and ingenious. A uh, tireless, I wasn't sure exactly what word to describe here, but basically just talking about how they pour everything into this thing and they may neglect sleep or food or things like that. His whole life went out into the new situation. Easily forget to eat or sleep until exhaustion overcomes them will sacrifice all else for such possibilities. 
hate routine. In its service, they may forget to eat or sleep. They cannot rest until they get the genie out of the bo bottle. So th there's definitely this theme of tireless, tirelessly with their full force going after this thing and, you know, kind of forgetting about that they may get tired until their body like is absolutely overcome by exhaustion. Now we get into some of the more, like, a couple more negative ones. This one is maybe evasion or avoidance. If he notices a mistake, he's usually very adroit in covering it up. They can get away with anything. Enables them to evade with considerable skill conflicts both within themselves and with others. A joke or a compliment will be made to distract attention from any difficulty or contradiction. Consequences of feeling will always be avoided. And abandon. This is probably the most common one that I saw. Only to abandon them cold-bloodedly, without regard and apparently without remembrance. Only to abandon everything again for the sake of a new possibility. Quitting his newly planted field, he goes away empty. Don't prefer to enter any lasting relationship with anyone. Excessive spontaneity. Difficult to keep appointments. They cannot always be depended on. Attention is easily distracted by something else. Shrink from intimate relationships. Not so strong in completing projects. Once they get the genie out, it does not interest them anymore. And then the advice from Myers-Briggs was they must not quit. They must persevere. Okay, so now I want to get into one slide all about extroverted intuition with the common words that I saw over and over and over again. So I'll remove my face in a second, but if you want to screenshot this, as these videos have gone on, I've been building these slides for the sake of like, if I want to show a beginner, like what words can you associate with? I wanted one slide to show people. Possibilities. That's the number one word. It <laughs> had to be included on there. Possibilities. Fresh outlets. New. Emerging. Connections. Enthusiasm. Expectant. Imaginative. Creative impulse. Spontaneity. Expand in many directions, novelty, unconventional, radiant, changeable, original, merry, new modes of expression, creative, joy, change, brainstorming, freedom, distract, future promise, inventive, trailblazing, ideation, active in mind, expanding. And so I just thought that this, I, I just, I love these words. This is such a fun, this is such a fun slide. I love these type of words. Um, and I chose this picture of this hot air balloon. I was thinking of this picture. I used to live in Boise and there used to be this hot air balloon festival every year where there's like hundreds of hot air balloons all going out at once. And it really just reminded me like as a metaphor of extroverted intuition, there's something airy and kind of weightless, not tied down, but expanding into like hundreds, I'm thinking of like hundreds of hot air balloons all going up at once and hundreds of possibilities. And it's kind of this metaphor for representing all these ideas and these possibilities that they're going out on. Um, there was definitely a theme also of joy and being merry. And when I think of hot air balloons, they're like really colorful and there's a joy and a merriness about it. And it's kind of, it's creative. It's, and it's definitely unconventional. It's an unconventional mode, mode of travel. It's off the beaten path. Um, and it's just expanding and going up into this future promise. Okay, so now I wanted to get into a slide about extroverted intuition, uh, you know, as a stereotype, as a caricature, if I really, you know, amp up some of these qualities and look at all these pictures. There are literally so much. One thing that just strikes me as a whole when I'm looking at all this is look at all, look at the color, look at the rainbow quality. Just, I mean, so much, I mean, just jolly, merry, getting the fullness out of life is something that I'm seeing with this. Um, so I guess I'll just start at the top left. I put these roller skates there. Um, because it, because I put this here, I don't know if this is the best one to start with, but I put these here because it, there's something about roller skating that seems very extroverted intuition to me. And maybe it's because I'm in San Francisco and like in Golden Gate Park, there is this, uh, a roller skating spot and they're putting, always putting on like this groovy, like seventies music and people like hand paint their own skates. My sister, you know, P painted her own skates. Um, and it's something, it's not like too sensory, but I think what I wanted these roller skates to represent was they could try many different types of hobbies. Anything that's new or a fresh possibility seems really interesting. And maybe they don't stick with it for a long time. Like I think with my sister, for example, like I don't think she's roller skating anymore, but she was like really into it and painting these roller skates, wanting to go roller skating or whatever and customizing them with all these colors. And then, you know, maybe not so much into it, but just liking like any sort of new hobby, really down to try something for the first time in particular. Uh, the next picture, I put this cake and I was thinking about this cake. It just, it's another metaphor more, more so than anything exactly practical, but just, it looks very merry and jolly. And you're thinking about new connections. How can we, and sometimes it will involve sensory things, but it's not limited to sensory things, but like 
Oh, cake and Skittles combining those? Oh, what would that be like? I was talking to Garrett and I was talking about like, what do you think like an extroverted intuitive would think about this cake or whatever? And he would, one thing that he mentioned was like, they're probably more interested in the idea of this cake than the actual eating of this cake. And I was thinking that that's really true. The possibility and the act of making this cake would be, might be really exciting if they've never done something like this before and they like want to do it with like friends or something. And then as soon as it's actually realized, probably wouldn't want to do it again necessarily because it's not a possibility. It then just becomes a mere fact. Okay, if this is the cake or whatever. Um, the next picture, I think this is more so ENFP than like ENTP, but painting on each other. My sister did like body painting with some of her friends doing like these murals on their backs. And, but it just talked, what I wanted to include was it talked a lot about creative artists and many, many times there were quotes about being an artist. So I wanted to include something on here that kind of showed that artistic side. Uh, the next is a coffee cup. It's just kind of a, it's like a bizarre coffee cup. You're like, these are mushrooms and butts. This is kind of, you know, with lots of different colors, but it, it's like, there was a quote that I don't know if I included it, but it's not just seeing one sensory thing. It's always the relationship or the connection of these sensory things. So it's like, okay, we apply legs with mushrooms. Oh, what could that be like? Oh, that could be interesting. So it's always, it's like a new combination. It's kind of this bizarre, like new combination. And I notice sometimes they'll have kind of goofy coffee cups. In general, I wanted to make mention of like very, uh, very individual coffee cups sometimes if they drink coffee. Like this was gifted to me by an extroverted intuitive. Now I use it, see, so we now have extroverted sensing. I use it for the shape. I love the feel of holding a big coffee cup. Okay, then we have um, bullet journaling. I, you know, this is kind of, this is kind of a similar idea to the roller skating where it's any new idea or hobby and then, you know, you might kind of like leave it behind at some point. But I've known many ENPs, I knew an ENTP, an ENFP, a couple of people who got really into bullet journaling for a short time. You know, it's kind of this, ooh, possibility and there's so much you can do with bullet journaling. You can make your own spread and it's like this creative expression and let's put sushi on it. And you know, I feel like they're, all, I feel like a lot of ENPs, they feel bad about not making appointments or being tied down. So I find that these spurts were like, okay, I'm gonna return phone calls now. I'm gonna make sure I do stuff now. And then like, oh, okay, this is, this will be good. This will help me with my appointments or whatever. Cause I have a hard time with that. And then I can be creative, but then it's like more time with the creative aspect than like actually meeting the appointments or whatever. And then it becomes kind of boring and it's like, okay, done. Like my sister actually started a YouTube channel for a while about bullet journaling. And now she has like long since been on many different like things since then. Uh, the next one is the movie Up. And I, I just like, this is just, once again, this, all these balloons is really just a metaphor to me of extroverted intuition of all of these possibilities, like thousands of balloons um, and going up into the sky with these possibilities and not being tied down. Um, but I wanted to make mention of animation. So it could be anime, it could be Disney movies or Pixar or whatever, but I just find that there's something uh, with extroverted intuition that seems kind of childlike. Like when you're a child, everything is new and there's so many possibilities, this kind of jolly, merry side and everything is new and there's this excitement for life. The next, I put a symbol for chat GPT or AI in general. Um, the word like emerging, uh, emerging possibilities. I think of like emerging technologies or, um, you know, really quick to pick up these type of things where there's some, where there are some types that are like, oh no, AI dangers. <laughs> Whereas like, I've got a friend now, so living in San Francisco, it's been really interesting because way more interesting jobs here than like in Idaho, or I should say much more non-traditional jobs. So like I have a friend now, he's an ENTP and he actually does sales for ChatGPT in particular. And um, it talks about that they become really good at um, inspiring others on these new enterprises. So I find that that can make them really good at sales. I think like an ENTP in particular, and in, actually ENFP is both really good because he's actually like really excited and he knows all the different like types of AI. I've talked to him for a long time about it. And um, yeah, you can tell he has a, a real genuine enthusiasm for it. You know, so basically seeing the possibilities and the promise, the promise of AI, as opposed to seeing the dangers of it. Um, on the left, we have some people with like, they're like, you know, drinking wine together. And I wanted to point out this girl's pink hair. That's something that I think is very N-E. It's very like, what could we do? What are the possibilities? And it doesn't limit to things to, you know, the reserved traditional thing. Like, whereas with introverted sensing, I typically see like minimal makeup, very reserved hairstyles. And this is the opposite of that. So, you know, pink, we're really expanding. We're not putting bounds on like what hair could look like. So I think pink hair is something that really, um, could embody or caricature extroverted intuition as well as, you know, gathering around with a bunch of people um, 
you know, it's an extroverted function. Um, so like when it talked about them having many acquaintances, this is something that I could see them doing perhaps. Uh, where do I go from here? Uh, the bottom left, I put the apps like Be Real or Threads. I was thinking about a lot of extroverted intuitives. I know when a new social media comes out, they're some of the first to jump on it. So like, I'm thinking of some introvert, extrovert intuitives. I know that as soon as Be Real came out, they were right on it. I heard a lot of times the first time I ever hear about an app is from an extroverted intuitive. Like I don't spend a lot of time online actually. And so I'll be hanging out with any user. I'm like, did you hear about X? And it's like, I haven't heard about it yet. But anyway, so, but now that I'm thinking about these extrovert intuitives, they've completely abandoned Be Real or like people hopped on threads. Now they're off of it. It's this quick to like, ooh, what could this possibility be like? Then they kind of hunt around and like, okay. No. Uh, then we have this guy, this picture of this death metal shirt, you know, with the unicorn. This just looked, just this picture, this just looks so N-E to me. You know, he looks so jolly and merry and this shirt is like, you know, it's, it's got some animation on it, like I said, like kind of this cartoon, the wall's green. Um, it just looks very extroverted intuition to me. Um, on the bottom, we have, you know, these signs. I just wanted something to represent travel. I find that, you know, when they're exploring possibilities, they want to go see lots of different places. And I find that they're very likely to spend, you know, any disposable income they have on traveling, like been to a lot of places, you know, maybe it's road trip or flying or, but really just so down, um, even like last minute, so down to come travel. When, as soon as we moved to San Francisco and our families in Idaho, all of our extrovert intuitive relatives were the ones who came and visit, visited first. My sister's an ENFP, she came down right away. Um, my, uh, his dad is an ENTP, he came down right away. And similarly with this nomads thing on the bottom with that RV camper thing, whatever you call those, um, this just seems like a very enthusiastic picture as well. This handstand, you know, it's kind of enthusiastic as well as kind of like doing the nomad thing I find is kind of a NE thing to do. Like I can work from wherever. It's really a caricature of extroverted intuition, um, traveling around, doing whatever you want to do. I think one thing about like traveling around like that is it's not hindering freedom. And there was definitely a big thing about seeing the routine as this prison. And this does not hinder your freedom. Like you can go so many places, you can, you know, travel and see so many places and you're not limited uh, by the routine. You know, there's a lot of freedom and potential. So then above that, I have this white car, which if you don't know, in San Francisco, there's a bunch of self-driving cars. There's a few brands and then there's like Cruise, this one's Waymo. Anyway, so there's absolutely no one in the car. So anytime people come to visit, it's very interesting to see what their reactions are gonna be. I've told different people, so, so like one of these cars will drive by and I'll like point out to people, I'm like, hey, I see these are self-driving cars or whatever. And uh, you know, the NE users are like, wow, that is so cool. Um, I had an INFP friend, she came and visited and she was like, we are living in the future. Can you believe this? This is so exciting. And you know, the reaction of different people is really interesting. And anyway, so I'm like all about these cars. I think they're so cool. I think they look really cool from an SE perspective as well. But yeah, just, you know, this is an example of an emerging technology. Emerging was kind of a common word for extroverted intuition. Okay, then we have this bumper sticker, my cat ate your stick family, or all these variations of, I think that's so, it's a funny take on, there's been like these stick families and that's become kind of a normal thing. But then you take NE and it comes in and kind of like disrupts this thing. I find bumper stickers in general to be kind of an NE thing. I've seen a lot of personalization, like maybe stickers on water bottles, stickers on laptops, uh, you know, these bumper stickers on your car. So types of, funny personalization like that, I think is a way to express individuality. Then below that, it's this family petting a hyena. Now, the reason I put this here is because we have, Garrett's uncle is an INTP who actually has a hyena, which is which is really interesting, he has a pet hyena. And he also has like 20 snakes of all these different kinds. He had really big snakes too. He had, he had this story that he tells people, he, uh, so he has one, I guess it's not a dangerous snake. I can't remember what kind of snake it is, but it's a big snake, like five to 10 feet long. Like it's a pretty long snake. It's a big snake that he had. Like he, these are big animals that he has. These aren't just like small like snakes that he has. Like he has big snakes. Um, and I guess it got out one day and they looked all over their house and they couldn't find it. And they just, they looked and looked and looked for days. They looked, anyways, they eventually just gave up. So for months it was missing, but they knew it was in their house. They were pretty sure it was in their house somewhere, but it was missing and they couldn't, they're like, how do you lose like this huge snake? How do you lose it? Anyways, they couldn't find it. And so they would have guests come over and they were just kind of like trying to keep it on the down low. Like, I guess the snake's not dangerous. They weren't worried about something happening, but they just wouldn't tell people because they knew it would be disconcerting. I guess it's avoidance of this thing. Anyways, they knew it'd be disconcerting if people knew that this snake was loose in the house. Anyways, they're like, oh, it'll come out when it's hungry. And I guess it's kind of normal for them to hibernate for a long time and they don't need to eat very frequently. And anyways, it was like, it was like eight months that this snake was lost for. 
and they eventually, when it started crawling out, then they could see where the hiding spot was. And it had been behind the dryer because it was warm back there. Anyways, it came out when it was finally hungry. So <laughs> it's like, anyways, so I just thought that was, I thought that was interesting. Very off the beaten path pets. Okay. So he's got, uh, he has a hyena and he has, um, all these snakes. Um, I knew one who had pet squirrels, uh, one ENTP who, or one who took the glands out of skunks and had pet skunks. Uh, hedgehog, I guess that's not super off the beaten path, but anyways, just kind of these random, like definitely off the beaten path type pets, you know, and I've definitely seen them have like dogs or whatever too, but just like really like a hyena, you're like, okay, you don't, I mean, that's crazy. Like that, that's, that's so unusual, really interesting. Um, I also thought her hairstyle is kind of off the beaten path, you know, like shaving half your head, uh, with short hair on the side. I think that's kind of a, I wanted to point out that it potentially could be like an NE hairstyle as well. Then we have this picture of these, you know, these books with these headphones. I just wanted that to symbolize uh, language learning. I find that they are really into like possibilities and, you know, expanding themselves. And, you know, it talks about them being clever. I think they pick up uh, things pretty quickly. And so picking up a foreign language pretty quickly in combination with liking to explore and traveling being part of that. I think that, you know, language learning is something that I see a lot of them into. I don't know that I see a lot of them necessarily being bilingual, but I see them definitely being interested for a time then they <laughs> kind of put it down or whatever, but at least for a time interested in being like bilingual. Also this dyeing the beard, different colors. I've seen um, guys that are NE users kind of playing around with like mustaches in kind of certain ways or long beards or, uh, one, you know, dyeing the beard for a time, or you've got the any user wife who's like, honey, dye your hair, dye your beard pink. And she, you know, she convinces him to dye his beard pink for a day and then he shaves it off. So that's, some, that's something that I think I've seen with extroverted intuition as well. So you can kind of see with all this, it's definitely like playing around with new things and it's very subjective because it has to be whatever is a possibility and whatever is novel to that any user at the time. And then as soon as something becomes a, a mere fact, as they said, and it's not a possibility anymore that maybe it's less interesting. Anyways, yes, this is my video on extroverted intuition. We only got one more left, introverted intuition, so I will be making that tomorrow. If you'd like to know more information, I guess I'm just gonna have to power through this construction. If you uh, want to know more information about your personality type, I will have a playlist linked below. You can click on any of those playlists, got all the playlists linked below. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, bye.